God is amazing. And I assure you that this word is a living word. If you give your heart over to the word that God is sending or has been sending, you will experience the power of the Holy Spirit sanctifying you, his gracious sanctifying power that keeps you clean and pure and holy before him. My Lord, what a mighty God we serve. So Father, we thank you for this platform of ministry that you have raised up to give you glory and to bring many into a righteous understanding of your word. We want to thank you for every other platform that you have raised up across the body of Jesus Christ. My Lord, we want to thank you, Lord God, for those platforms that you have raised up that have departed from truth that you even know, hallelujah, you're working to bring them into alignment with your divine word and truth. We want to thank you for those who are on, on course that you will magnify your works. Hallelujah. For every discouraged pastor and teacher and evangelist, apostle, prophet, we ask that you strengthen them and send, send your word, send forth your word in their hearts to bring hope. For every young person and older person and young at heart, we pray that your word, your word brings life. And your word will come with life and power. Because even when we don't see it with our natural eyes, you are still working. You've never stopped working. In, and we know that on, the, on, the, on the, 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 the seventh day you rested. And in a sense, all your works were finished from before the foundation of the earth. But Lord, you are manifesting those works in time. Hallelujah. And as those works are manifested in time, wow, we behold your works and we give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. We continue to speak about the promise justified by faith. I want you to get your notebooks, your, your phones, take some notes, listen to what God is saying because he wants to speak to our hearts. What does the term justification mean? It is the action of declaring or making righteous in the sight of God. My God, justification is God declaring someone and making them righteous in the sight of God. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. And a significant part of his promise to humanity, hallelujah, was to justify, to bring us to a place where we are justified by faith. Hallelujah. And if you listen to Pastor Andrew last week, you will see clearly how he outlined that which God did in his awesome plan of redemption to bring us to a place where we can stand before God justified just as if we have never sinned. Somebody needs to hear that. God has a plan for your life so that you can stand before him in love just as if you never sinned or just as if you never inherited the sin nature that you inherited from Adam. That is a glorious promise, my Lord. And as we look at the scriptures, I'm not only praying with myself, but as we look at the scripture, that, 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 that promise comes with an awesome, awesome, awesome promise. Hallelujah. Romans 5 verse 1 to 2. The promise that God gave us to justify us comes with the promise that every single human heart longs for. I want you to take some time and let us look at that scripture right now. God has given us many precious promises in his word. But this one has come with a promise that every human heart longs for. Hallelujah. That many people spend their lives working to find. But this promise that I'm speaking about only comes one way. Romans 5 verse 1 to 2. Let's read that. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith 
into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. My Lord, let me just stop right there. There are many persons around the world. They are miserable. They are disheartened. They are disgruntled. They are depressed. They are frustrated because of varying life situation. Sometimes it's lack of resources, no money. Sometimes it's relationships that are not going right. Sometimes it's, 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 it's addictions to drugs and alcohol and prostitution. And it can be many varying situations. And we know who is the author of these negative situations. The devil is. Hallelujah. I'm sure if you take a pen right now and begin to write down all the negatives that can happen to a human, my Lord, pornography, um, incest, abortion, slavery, my God, rape, my Lord, all lying, stealing, all the vices, all the works of the flesh are as a result of sin in the world. And that sin has taken away the capacity for man to have peace with God. Hallelujah. There is no peace with God. And sometimes we have peace with our neighbors and peace with our um, family members and peace with the members of our church. We have peace for a while. But something inevitably happens and that peace is broken. Why? Because God is the only one that can give you lasting peace with him and with others and sustain that peace. And he has promised to justify us by faith so that we can have peace with God. There are many people who this week will spend thousands of dollars to acquire something that they think that will give them peace. My Lord, there are many who will spend many thousands of dollars at psychiatrists and psychologists trying to find peace. My Lord, there are many right now today, they are spending their last waking moments because they don't know that their time is up because all of us are assigned a certain amount of time. To, to live and it is appointed unto man once to die and after death comes the judgment. So there are people who this day have, have gotten up and they think that peace is going to a, 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 a car show or going to a match or going to, to spend some time at a movie or going to look for their boyfriend or their girlfriend or, or going to a pub or going somewhere. But they have no clue that what they're looking for, they will never find it there and that their time is running out. God says, being justified by faith. And I want you to listen and, I, and, and guess what? When we come like this on, on a Sunday, please know that we, we offer the opportunity to further break these down in a Bible study and to, for you to, Inter interact and engage this content so that you, you, you the, 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 the eyes of your understanding will become enlightened. Hallelujah. Because I don't care how, how depressed or frustrated you are. When the Holy Spirit brings the spirit of lightning, enlightenment, it's like it's that light shining in darkness. And the light dispenses the, 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 dispels the darkness of your mind. My God, no wonder when we were growing up, we used to sing a song that says, Whispering Hope. Oh, how welcome thy voice. It makes our hearts in sorrows, in, in sorrow, in sorrowful states, rejoice. Because guess what? God comes with truth, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth that God sends is the truth that will cause you to be justified by faith so you can have peace with God. My Lord and Master, 
justifications by faith refers to the act of God considering humans as just and innocent and righteous before him. Can you imagine? All of humanity was sold under sin. We inherited a sin nature from Adam who fell. And in Adam all died. But there is a God who had a plan of salvation to make everybody who would come to him innocent and righteous in his sight. Not because of your own righteousness, but through faith in Jesus Christ. That was God's plan of redemption. And this faith I'm talking about, you may, you may look at it and you may say, but I have had faith. I believe in God. Yet I don't feel that sense of being innocent and righteous before God. I'm not talking about mere human faith or belief or trust. Because that is the starting point. And I can tell you, how does this work? My God, no one, no one can come to God except the Holy Spirit draws him by his word. And so even human faith comes by hearing the word of God. Because God, you are, you, let me just, let me just, let me just say to you that God has not left you in this world alone to find him. You can't find God by yourself alone. God has not left you in this world to find him by yourself. You cannot. But his spirit is working through humans to cause you to find him. Hallelujah. And as his word is shared, as you position yourself to hear his word, and sometimes you haven't even positioned yourself to hear him. But because he's God, he allows he can allow you to be passing somewhere and you hear, you hear one of Tasha Cobb's song, songs, you hear, you hear C.C. Wine and goodness of God. You can be, you can be um, just switching channels and hear the word of God. You can have a praying grandmother and you go over there and they're talking about God. You can have a co-worker at work who just, you just doing a devotion or, or being nice and kind to you. But God knows how to reach every single person. And when he begins to pull at your heart, hallelujah, that builds in you human belief and trust. Sometimes it's allowing a situation to take you to the end of yourself. And you have come to the end of yourself and you realize that I can't, I, I, I can't live like this. And out of that situation, you begin to develop human belief and trust in a supernatural God. But guess what? He knows that that is coming with willpower. He knows that that will not work for long. That is a problem with the world. A lot of persons are not justified by faith like I'm going to explain. They are Christians by association, but never ever encountered the Holy Spirit who is given in this time the responsibility to move us from faith, human faith, to faith. Is God determined to move us from faith, human faith, to his supernatural faith. My Lord, that is what God wants to do. So God is not just interested in our human belief and trust. Because that is fickle. You could have gone to your, your, your godmother, your grandmother, your mother and had a beautiful weekend and they spoke to you. And faith came in your heart. To, to begin to change your ways and begin to, 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 and, and, to, to, to see God. And you get in your car, you get on a bus, and you get among some friends. And before you know it, you have forgotten even that promise. But God is faithful. He has a plan to justify us by faith. How does this happen? 
by the Holy Spirit. Justification by faith is God giving us his Holy Spirit. The Spirit is the life of Christ lived out in us. The gift of the Holy Spirit. For by grace are we saved through faith. It is not our faith. It is the gift of God. Hallelujah. This faith that God wants to give you is not vulnerable to your failure. And it is not intimidated by the failures of life and the, the, the sin that is in your life. Or the cares of the world. It is the Holy Spirit. So in other words, the scripture could read, being justified by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We have peace with God. When we engage, when we agree with God and walk in agreement with his spirit, we are justified by faith. This faith now begins to set the boundaries in our life. Can you imagine? God wants you to exchange your basic human faith and belief for his supernatural Holy Spirit or faith, which now begins to set the parameters, the boundaries for your life. My God, God is awesome. And even in the Old Testament, we see where God was doing um, awesome works. He was justifying people, but not the way he justified. He's justifying people after Christ's death. How do I know that? Let's look at Abraham. Abraham was justified by his belief in God, not his works. His belief in God. And, and yes, Abraham blundered. But God took him to a place uh, where he came to the end of himself. And when God set up that test of faith, he passed it. I'm telling you, God is taking all of us to the end of ourselves. And when you are down to your rock bottom, many times you will do one or two things. You will humble yourself and look up to God. Or you will wallow in self-pity. And go out. Go out of this world without God. Do you know how many persons are in, 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 in mental institutions, in homes, on the, sleeping on the bridges or whatever? You think that God, God is not, God is not righteous to leave them and, and just they didn't have an, an opportunity. Let me tell you something. God takes personal responsibility to reveal himself to every human that you ever see. And sometimes you see some people and you don't know what impressions God has made on them. I'm thinking of a young man who committed suicide recently. That young man grew up in a pastor's house. He went to Sunday school. He had so many things going for him. But guess what? Didn't the scripture say bad communication, corrupt good manners? He went and chose the word, the fast pace. And God would have called him many times, but he rejected the call. I'm telling you, there comes a time when, 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 when you, can, you can come to the end of yourself and, and get to a, a point where that point can become a stepping stone or a stumbling block. And God, will, God, how God warns us, he sends people to warn us. He sends people in our lives. But many of us won't hear a voice out of heaven saying, stop. But he will send people along our path. My God, Abraham was one man who was justified by faith, not by his works. His belief in God was accounted to him as righteous. This implies that Abraham received grace even before the dispensation of grace and truth. When God approaches an ungodly individual, and that individual believes God and is motivated by his human faith to be, obey God, God begins to call that man righteous. God validates him and say, it's just as if you have never sinned. That was what God did with Abraham. Right? In other words, Abraham just began to believe God. As a matter of fact, when you look at Abraham's life, he was living in, 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 in a pagan culture. Right? Nobody in his, his, in his culture... His father was Tira, and he traveled miles when God called him to take away himself. And he took one family member with him. Hallelujah. But every step of God's way of his life, God was making an impression. 
My God, God, God is God is the one who makes an impression on all of us. If you want to know about Abraham, let's look at Galatians 3, verse 6 to 9. My God, even as Abraham believed God, and God, God says, I'm going to give you a tick and label that belief righteousness. All right? And God more because God chose him. God foresaw that God he would justify the heathen through faith. That is why he said to Abraham, Abraham, in thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And, and a couple of weeks ago, we looked at the promise. We looked at the fact that Abraham is seen as the father of, of the Jews, the father of, of the Islamic people, the Muslims, and the father of, father, father of Christians by faith in Jesus Christ. My Lord. But this promise that God gave Abraham that is referred to in Galatians 3. This promise is, is a promise that God is now fulfilling through Jesus Christ. Because sure, Abraham had Isaac and Jacob, Isaac and Ishmael and many other sons through his wife, Keturah and Sarah and Hagar. He had many sons. But this promise was speaking of God giving children from every nation. Hallelujah. And we see Ishmael coming through Hagar and, and, and later Muhammad forming the, the, the Islamic religion. And they revere Abraham as, as their father of the faith. And the Jews revere Abraham as their father through, 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 through Isaac. But guess what? God knew that in the fullness of time, he would send Jesus Christ, seed of Abraham, who would die for our sins. And that whoever believe in Jesus would become children of Abraham by faith. And so God said to Abraham, look at the stars. Look at the sand of the sea as far as your eyes could see, can see. You will have children. These children are now children of Abraham by faith in Jesus Christ. Father Abraham had many sons and many sons of Father Abraham. I am one of them. God allowed my nationality to be Jamaica. Hallelujah. Because guess what? In Christ, your nationality, um, when, you, in, when it comes on to the work of the Lord, God now uses people from every nation. He, he doesn't... Look at your gender and your nationality to qualify you to be used for his service. That's what I mean. But in his overall plan, according to the book of Acts, God sets the boundaries of your habitation. He determines which country you are, you are to be born in. Hallelujah. So that you may feel after him. So that there are unique experiences that God will give every one of you. That will fit into his eternal plan. Some persons you're watching, you've been through some terrible situation. And you wonder why. But begin to ask God to open the eyes of your heart. Surrender your life fully to him. And become the just who will live by the Holy Spirit. The just will live by the faith. Of the, of, of the Son of God, which is the Holy Spirit. He will open your eyes and cause you to begin to see why you were born in the family you were born in. Why you went through that terrible situation that you almost lost your mind. Because guess what? God doesn't waste himself. And when he justifies us and makes us righteous through Jesus Christ, he uses our lives to do awesome things. My Lord and merciful Father, God is awesome. He is mighty. And, and so, yes, we inherited sin and death. Every one of us inherited sin and death from our father, Adam. We were by nature children of wrath as others. My God, in fact, God calls us the children of disobedience. All of us. My God, we were na by nature sinful and walked in darkness in this earth. However, 
We were those who God created for himself. Hallelujah. Mankind is God's creation. And God was not forced to bend a knee to what Satan did. In fact, before the world began, the plan, the plan God had a rescue plan. Let me tell you, God, God has an awesome story. I, I, I believe you, he was, one of the titles you could give to his story is just simply Jesus or the promise or God's rescue plan. Hallelujah. God wanted children to stand before him in love. He didn't want robots to press a button and the, the robots freeze him. He wanted, hallelujah, flesh and blood children, children who have life in them, not, the breath, natural breath. Hallelujah. And he predetermined that in the fullness of time, he would come to live inside of us and multiply his family. So that he would have many, many spiritual sons. God is the father of the natural creation, but he has started a family. And that family that God has started is the family of God. I'm coming to you from an awesome study guide that we've been going through entitled The Death, Burial, and Resurrection of the Church. An amazing um, series of lessons that I got from a world conference i attended this year bible teachers international god is awesome he keeps speaking he keeps speaking he keeps speaking he keeps speaking let me tell you we serve a speaking god we serve a talking god a god who has downloaded his mind through the scriptures and i, I pause right now to to say to someone God wants to talk to you. You know, I have compassion. I remember a time when my understanding was dark. I grew up in the church, and yes, I understood the basics of the scriptures, having gone to Sunday school. But my heart was crying out for more of God, more of God, more of God, more. I just wanted to understand everything. I wanted to see for myself in the scriptures what God was saying. And you know, God answered me and he started even from a child. I was one who would sit in Sunday school and wanted to understand why certain things happen. And so guess what I did? I positioned myself everywhere that God could be found. I, I positioned myself. My God, you just need to. You need, just needed, needed to say that there was a youth conference or there was a youth rally or there was a Sunday school retreat or there was a conference. I was there. Not sitting in the back. Sitting in the front. I look back now at some of my childhood notebooks and realize that God is true. He said, you will find me if you search for me with your whole heart. And that word created the fear of God. Young people, you are watching the fear of God can only be produced by the word of God. You have to position yourself to hear the word of God. The word of God in you will cause you to, to, to say, I can't watch that. I can't go there. I can't be a part of this. The fear of God will stand up inside of you through the word of God. My God. Because the scriptures declare that in Adam all died. But, but even those that had not sinned like Adam sinned, everybody died. And death passed up upon all mankind. But this death was first spiritual because it was a separation from God. Then it became natural death when the body began to expire. Now the redemption or justification for Adam's children to live again required that they believe in the promise of the father to send a righteous seed and otherwise their souls and bodies will go into corruption forever. God's redemptive plan included sending Jesus. My God, I pray that even now, because, you know, every time you go into a class or you go among a set of young people, if they can all re recite, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, 
but have everlasting life. But for some, it's just recitation. It's just a rhetoric, a rhetoric. But God wants to blow that up in your spirit, even today, to cause you to see that God has a plan to make you just as if you never sinned, to eradicate that old sinful nature and give you justification by the faith of Jesus Christ. And that only comes by the preaching of the gospel. The gospel must be preached by those who are holy and sanctified and righteous. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it has the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe. And that is why we are decreeing and declaring that these uh, messages and the messages of every righteous person across the globe go across the airwaves. God created the internet. God created Hallelujah. Every form of media for the transmission of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And guess what? For some of us who are very comfortable, you know, you know, you know, last week, last week I had a rude awakening when the Lord began to remind me of my call to, 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 to the, un, the unsaved, the, the lost, those who don't know Christ to begin to cry out for more doors of utterance. Hallelujah. Because guess what? On a broadcast like this, it is many Christians who will get up and what? When we share, we share to our Christian friends. How many of you listening have, have looked at unsaved friends since this morning and sat down and decided that I am going to share this with those who do not know Christ? Hallelujah. That's because we have lost our passion for souls. We have become uncom um, uh, uncomfortable relating to them because we fear rejection. But remember somebody, somebody paid the price for you to hear the gospel. And too many Christians are, 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 are comfortable, comfortable in our own space. When God, guess what? Sometimes what God has to do is to turn up the heat in our lives to cause us to come back to the place have surrendered to him where we can have compassion and the ignorant and the out of the way god designed a rescue plan which is a part of the promise his rescue plan was that through jesus christ we would be justified in other words he would give you a clean slate God wants to give you a clean slate that slate this today. And he says, you can walk. My power is able to cause you to, to walk in that clean slate for the rest of your life. You may be out there and you may be a fornicator. You may be a thief. You may be a robber. You may be a prostitute. You may be a drunk dealer, a scammer. God can so fix your life that you never, you, you, your, your testimony is by goodbye world. I'm not staying any longer with you. The fear of God hit you. Hallelujah. The fear of God hit you in such a way that forever with the Lord, your soul it has found a resting place. Because God's re rescue plan, hallelujah, came of his own good. There was nothing of our own good that we could render that could be sufficient to restore us. It was God. He placed, he did this by placing the conscience in us that we would know that the gospel when we preach is truth and our belief in the gospel does not earn us any glory for, for what glory it is to believe that which the conscience confirms as truth. All the glory belongs to God. All the glory belongs to God. My God, this is what makes justification so precious. In other words, if you are watching me, your life can continue like it is for a number of years. But God wants to make you justified. He wants to, 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 to make, in other words, many of us think that we are going to be justified by, by works, by what we do. I'm going to start fasting. I'm going to stop stealing. I'm going to pay my tithe. I'm going to do all of that. The justification by faith means that you move into being. You move into living out of who you are as a son of God. In other words, say there is a young man called Romario. Romario is not just doing things. Hallelujah. He's living outside of his nature. 
Hallelujah. His nature is now the sons of God. So he is being holy. Why do you think that God says, be holy? Hallelujah. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Hallelujah. Why do you think he keeps saying be? Because justific justification by faith moves. That means that we live out of who we are. All we have to do was to believe. And God takes our human faith and gives us his faith. Hallelujah. To do so is to meet his requirement. Just believe that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. My God. And what God did in his awesome work is justify everybody who died before, 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 before Jesus came. To bring them apart into a part of this awesome promise. God wants us to believe his report. But there, let me tell you, peace with God. I want you to type peace with God in the chat. Peace with God in the chat. My God, because peace with God is awesome. I don't want you to forget this scripture, Romans 5, 1 to 2. Being justified by faith. We have peace with God. Peace with God. God is offering you peace with him. Peace and an eternal salvation filled with peace. You know, I went to a, 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 a Thanksgiving service for someone I loved dearly yesterday. And the thing that made me rejoice above anything is that that person found peace with God. Peace with God is priceless. My Lord. But there are cert certain things that can stop the peace with God. If you choose to walk after the spirit of the world, my God, everything you see you want, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life, that can block you. If you walk in a spirit of disobedience, my Lord, my Lord and Master, spirit of disobedience, that can block you from having peace with God. If you walk in unforgiveness, you will never find peace with God. Who is it? Who is it that has done you something so bad that you can't forgive them? You need to fall on your face now and say, God, my heart is bitter and hard. Open my heart so that I can totally release this person. Because sometimes people hurt you in their, in their immature state, in their ignorance, in their malicious state. But just choose to let it go. And sometimes it can help when you let them know, I've, I've forgiven you. Sometimes it's not expedient, but sometimes just let it go. It can be a debt. Just let it go. My God, choose to turn away from evil. You will have peace with God. Surrender to the spirit call. Follow after holiness and true righteousness. What am I saying today? Being justified by the faith of Jesus Christ. God is giving away his faith. Come on, slow down, slow down, slow down. Our human natural faith is the starting point. Do you think that your natural faith is big enough to do some of the things that God wants to do in your life? Trust me. I proved that long ago that my natural faith was what God was looking for. That, and, 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 and look at Jesus. When he was here, he, he, he saw how weak his, his, his apostles' faith were, his, his disciples. They even said to him, Lord, increase our faith. Hallelujah. But there was a day when he would say to them, have the faith of God. The faith of God comes by just resting. You're going to a trying situation. You don't know how it's going to work out. But you just fall on your knees. There are many times I've been through some trying situation. And I don't know what to do. I just go and lay across my bed, open my Bible, and begin to cry out to the Lord. And in that moment, he comes with a quiet instruction. He says, do this. Turn right. Turn left. Give up that. Call so and so. Hallelujah. And sometimes he speaks through people, and you just know 
that is God. Because with God, you want to know how you know that you're justified by faith? Well, that comes with salvation. Hallelujah. Salvation is justification by faith. But do you know in a situation when God gives you a, a, God gives you a choice to make before him, as a matter of fact, you just know that this is the way that God wants you to go. When you go that way, you have peace with God. Peace with God. Some of you, you don't have peace with God because, guess what? Your heart has become darkened because you are not thankful. Romans chapter 1. When we are unthankful, our foolish heart gets dark. Hallelujah. When we are unthankful, our foolish hearts get, gets dark. What have you not been thanking God for? Begin to thank God because he says, even, even when they knew God, they worshipped him not as God. Neither were thankful. You see, the, chapter, the, 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 the book of Romans chapter 1 is pro, it, it, it describes the progression of ungodliness. You can get to a place where you become unthankful. And your heart becomes dark. When your heart becomes dark, you're professing yourself to be wise, you become a fool. My God, your heart becomes dark. How your heart can become dark? My God, is when you're in a situation, you want what you want, you want what you want, you just want what you want. And when you don't get it, you become depressed. Hope the third makes the heart sick. What have you been hoping for that you didn't get? Have you considered that sometimes the things you want are the things that God will remove from your life because he sees the detriment? What about a young lady or a young man who, who desires to go and study abroad? Like I desired. Nothing is wrong with desiring to study abroad. I remember the time when I sent the, the college applications over abroad and I just knew that I wanted to go study abroad. I didn't see the money, but I wanted to go. I didn't even ask God if he wanted me to study abroad. But then some life situations came. My Lord, and in a moment of crying out before God, God says, you take. That's where you would start your tertiary education. It was not in God's plan for me to go and travel and, and, and go to school overseas. For some people it is. God has a plan for you. My God. For some people, God wants them to study abroad. But they are homebound. So you have to hear God in a situation. And you know that you, are led, when you will be led forth with peace. When you have peace with God... You may not necessarily have peace with people in a situation. Hallelujah. There are decisions that I've made in life. And I necessarily, I did not necessarily have peace with persons. My Lord, I remember sometimes, one time somebody gave me an ungodly um, advice. Because sometimes godly people can give you ungodly counsel. Because they, 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 not the counsel by itself is neither wrong or right. But. Well, in other words, you could go here or there. But you have to know what God is saying. Somebody can give you a counsel and say, yeah, man, that's your husband. You look, too, you look too good together. But is that God's will for your life? Because what if someone gave you that counsel and you just feel you don't have no peace with God? You don't have no peace in your mind. You don't have no peace in your heart. Stop. Hallelujah. You will be led forth with peace. Peace with God. Justification of my faith brought us into peace with God. In the state of having peace with God. But the daily working out of your life. What, what did I say? The word of God. 
When we agree with God and walk in agreement with him, with his spirit, we are justified by faith. And this faith now begins to set the parameters for what we will know and experience in our walk with God. It includes what he will use to sanctify us and what he will use to chasten us and what he will use to cause us to walk in righteousness. There are some of us, we are wanton. That means we want things outside of the boundaries of God's faith and he will allow us to go down that road why he will he wants us to hate that sin to hate it so much that we'll never return to it because you know what he says it's like a dog returning to its vomit so god sometimes have to allow us to hate certain things to see the detriment that it has on us and other people to change our ways and to turn to a living god being justified by faith we have peace with God. I don't want you to ever forget this promise. God has promised peace. Peace, peace in this dark world of sin. The blood of Jesus still whispers peace. God's plan is that we stand before him in love. He wants us justified. To be justified means to be made righteous in the sight of God. Only God can make us righteous in his sight. Therefore, those who are faith are made righteous of God and they are justified to live and not die. Remember, you know, the wages of sin is death. My God. And so every one of us inherited the sin nature. And we are justified in, sight of, in the sight of God to die. But God's rescue plan say, I know she deserves to die. I know he deserves to die. But I have a rescue plan. And my rescue plan is Jesus. And when they come to me, I'm going to justify them by faith in him. They will come to me helpless. They'll come to me wounded. They'll come to me hurting. And guess what? I am going to. Dear Jesus. In spite of all your wounded, hurting state, I am going to pull them to myself. They are coming, but I see a little faith. I see a little human faith in their hearts, but that's not enough. For by grace are we saved through faith, and not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. You can't earn your way. You can, we cannot earn our way. We can't earn our way. You know, and, and we need to be reminded that there are so many people who are boasting in charitable deeds. But, but you know that if you give charity and then you advertise it, God says you should give in secret. Because guess what? When you give and the gleaner big you up, you already have your reward because your reward was that you were looking for the spotlight but if you give in secret the lord who sees in secret will reward you openly as i wrap up i'm going to be i'm sharing with those who are who are, who are not saved right now so let me start with those who are saved for you to be justified by faith and receive salvation there came a point when you cried out to God and he took your little human faith and installed his faith inside of you, the faith of the Holy Spirit, that is the faith that allowed you to just begin to just give up certain things. Hallelujah. It was not a struggle anymore. And that is the faith that caused you to continue steadfastly in the word. But what is wrong? The church, the church on a whole, not every part of the, the church, but there are many, many churches that are off course in terms of the doctrines not being accurate or, or the word, the word not mixed with faith. And so therefore people, people, people's consciences are not pricked. Hallelujah. When you come to the house of the Lord, your conscience should be pricked. If you're in fornication, you should be uncomfortable. If you stole some money, you should want to give it back. If you made a promise and you break it, you have, you, you, you're going to want to fix it. Honorably. 
So Christians, if you have no peace with God, it's because you have moved from that position of justification. And you need to, 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 to repent to be able to have peace with God. If you are not saved, you too need to get back to a place. Get to that place. Because right now, uh, no man comes to the Father unless the Holy Spirit draws him. So God is now even drawing you. The Holy Spirit is drawing you. My Lord, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. You might be driving in your car, you might be in your house, you might be just going in a store or somewhere, but you're hearing him saying, come, come unto me. You are labored and heavy laden. I want to give you rest. I want you to get rest for your soul. You're hearing him calling you. That call, that word coming from the preacher is building human faith. And you're considering, I think that maybe I can live this life. I think I can change my way. God help me. I'm miserable. I want you. That's, that's God calling you. And, and the word, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is building, hallelujah, human faith in you. But God says, as soon as your heart is open, I'm going to take that human faith and I'm going to install my faith in you to make it as if you have never sinned. My God, hallelujah. Huh? Oh, Jesus, my God, God wants to make you just and innocent. And guess what he says? I will keep you clean. I'll prevent you from falling. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. He justifies us and he keeps us from falling if we want to be kept. I'm going to pray with someone right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. That being justified by faith, we have peace with you. For every backslider that is tied to this uh, message or, or, or hearing your preceding word, cause them to know that they have moved from a place of justification. That's why they have no peace. For everyone, hallelujah, who does not have that peace with you, because they are not born again, Spirit of God, let your convicting power go out and save souls. Cry out to him. Begin to cry out. Say, Jesus, save my soul. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Forever, for everyone that calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Hallelujah. I remember calling on the Lord. The Lord's name said, Jesus. And he hears you. And he hears and he answers your prayer. Um, and begin to cry up. And if you're sincere, he will save you. He will justify you. And guess what? After he justifies you, he can keep you justified. Just as if you have never sinned. That's the amazing God we serve. Make you a part of his body. Make you a part of his kingdom. Hallelujah. Surrender to the spirit God. And enter in. Enter in. Enter in. A holy life awaits you. You can have peace with God. Peace in the morning. Peace in the evening. Peace at supper time. Peace, and you know what peace does? Hallelujah. Peace is peace. The, 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 the peace of God will guard your heart and mind. My God, and keep you. And God, you know what God says? He will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on Him. He wants to keep your mind that stayed on Him. So your mind is fixed. Your appetites and your desires change, and you can't get enough. You can't get enough of God. Because how oh, 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 unsearchable are his riches. But guess what? He, one thing you will do. You satisfy your soul. Every day. With new mercies. And cause you to live in his ab abundant and amazing grace. Being justified by faith. We have peace with God. What a promise. May God bless you. Join us next time.